Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here. We are in studio today talking sports with Val. We're going to be winding things down here. Our uh, winter sports season came to a close last week, so this will be our last show for a few weeks before we get going with spring sports. First off, how are you doing, Val? Yeah, doing well. You know, um, I want to uh, congratulate Angelo DiCarlo of WHME, our friends there. Um, won the Virgil Sweet Award from the IBCA. That's one of the highest honors they give to they give out, and Angelo's been at it for well over a decade now. And um, you know, for a guy who's from Pennsylvania and went to Syracuse, boy, he he made himself at home in our area right away. And congratulations to him. Uh, I also like to congratulate Chad Scobie and Marcus Smiley. Chad is the new um, assistant boys golf coach at Rochester. Okay, the guy who played golf at for the Zebras, and I I believe he he and Mason Heidi were teammates. Okay. Back in the day, and now uh, Mason's going to be the head coach, and Chad will be his assistant. Congratulations to Marcus Smiley, he's new uh, uh, girls tennis assistant coach at Rochester, and um, he knows Coach Pollock very, very well. Okay. And of course, Marcus was also a very, very good tennis player himself. Back in the day, he was kind of one who kind of rose up the ladder, and I think got to be number one singles back in the day. So, uh, I know Marcus uh, attended most of the matches last year, so he knows the kids real well. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and coming up on Monday, baseball, girls, tennis, and boys golf practice begin. So we already had softball practice, and I imagine they might have gotten outdoors this week. But Yeah, a few days there that were halfway decent. Yeah, yeah. so uh, maybe not today, but yeah, their practice begins on Monday. I know I think Rochester had a baseball camp last week for the kids, so mm-hmm. I, I, believe me, I know those guys are raring to go for... Oh, yeah. I tell you what, mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw a, a video of uh, Tanner pitching. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I would not want to be in the batter's box. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the uh, the thing said he was touching eighty eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Get, getting there. And he's still just a junior, right? And with a combination, and then his breaking ball combined, yeah, that's mm-hmm. just a lot you have to be prepared for. You can step in the batter's box against. Yeah, him. I think he said his change was about eight to nine miles an hour slower than his fastball. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, fastball, fastball change. Yeah, with the eight or nine mile an hour drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Right, and they, I believe they open the season, they're going all the way down to Madison, which is in the southeast corner of the state. I think they're going to play a three-way doubleheader against Madison and New Albany. Wow. So, yeah, they, they're de- and they've definitely put together a challenging schedule. Yeah. And we'll hopefully prepare them for the Bremens and the Wabashes and the yeah. Lavilles if they encounter them in the postseason. And then uh, I wanted to congratulate Alexa Finke for receiving two academic honors. She was named... Uh, Academic, uh, honorable mention, all state in basketball, mm-hmm. and she was named first team academic all state in gymnastics. Yeah. So in both the uh, the the basketball honors given out by the IBCA, the Basketball Coaches Association, and the gymnastics award is given out by the ICGSA, the Indiana Coaches of Girls Sports Association. Okay. So congratulations to do two sports and keep your grades up at the same time. Awesome, Alexa. That's great. Yeah. Kudos to Alexa and. Obviously, we're going to be watching her a lot this spring as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that'll be uh, that'll be another one of those teams that it'll be fun to, to go on that ride with them again this uh, this spring. So looking forward to that. Yeah. So, well, let's get right down into it here. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, our basketball season came to a close as all of our uh, all of our boys teams are now eliminated from the tournament. We had no no sectional champions on the boys side. We had two teams playing on Saturday, but uh, yeah. Both teams ended up falling short. Third straight year, we have not had a sectional champion in our area, which is yeah. You know, I I, I continue to think back to that mm-hmm. 2020 year when, you know, we had Argus and Caston that were set to go at uh, regional. They were going to play each other at Triton. You know, Rochester had won their second straight sectional and Friday. They had won their first sectional. That was their the second one. Okay, the second so, one was in 2021. Yeah, but uh, you know that Friday. That was when kind of the world came to a stop, mm-hmm. you know, Friday the 13th, actually, in March. And uh, it was a it was a weird scenario, but, boy, it was, what could have been, right? Right. Rochester was getting set to play Blackford in 2020, mm-hmm. see how they would do against Luke Brown, and yeah. who was basically the talk of the state. And there was, I know there was all kinds of talk that that game was going to be played in front of a packed gym. Yeah. And then in, yeah. In front of an empty gym, yeah, and then the game was canceled altogether. Yeah, so so yeah, these things are precious, and when you have a regional, it gets canceled. Yeah, that's disappointing. And then you know, twenty twenty one, when Caston came so close to beating Triton, 
on Triton's home floor, double overtime, and they uh, lose a heartbreaker, and then Rochester loses to Rossville. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, we have not been to a regional game, seen or at least seen our area teams in a regional since. Yeah, yeah. So take uh, take every one you get to go to, uh, you know, and and really soak it in. And yeah, uh, let's start off over at Tippecanoe Valley uh, hosting the sectional this year, and. You know, they, they had the first round by, so they didn't have to play until Friday. They take on uh, Knox in the first game. As we kind of expected, a pretty easy win there for the Vikings. Yeah, they won 54-26. to Balanced scoring in. Cooksey had 13. Um, Riley Shepard had 12, and Stephen Acosti had 11. And meanwhile, the defense just smothered Knox. I mean, they had a huge height advantage in that game. It, the final was 54-26, to and it really wasn't even that close. It was 48-12 to after the third quarter. Knox at four threes in the fourth quarter to make it look a little bit better, but the fourth quarter was played with a running clock, with Valley starters basically mostly on the bench. On the uh, so on the other side of the bracket, uh, John Glenn had to play on Tuesday. They had a game against Culver Academy, uh, and then they had a really tough game on Friday night against Bremen. I mean, that was they they had to play really hard to get past the a Lions. Bremen team that had beaten them in Walkerton about a week or two earlier, forty nine thirty six on the regular season game. But John Lynn was able to avenge that and win 45-38 to and really locked down Bremen defensively uh, in, the, in the second half of that game to pull that one out. So uh, it would be a rematch of uh, Tippecanoe Valley and John Glenn last year. It was in the was it semifinal round. It was actually the Tuesday quarter, night game. Quarterfinal yeah. round game uh, where Glenn would win that one, knock Valley out of the tournament. And uh, this time it's the sectional championship. And, uh, again, Glenn and, and Valley and – it was a little bit of a defensive battle there throughout the first half. I mean, it was a little bit of a time before we got some points on the board, and it was a long time before Valley got points on the yeah, board. Yeah, it was over four and a half minutes before a unit team scored. But Chase Miller was great, and every basket was pre- was precious in this game. 8 nothing, John and Glenn. Again, here was Valley's first bucket with Acasi, Stephen Acasi getting loose down low for a layup. But Chase Miller was terrific. He, he had two made field goals for the whole game. You just saw both of them. But that doesn't mean he only had four points. And they, right. <laughs> and they, right. Again, that was a nice move. By, I think it was Kyler Johnson who was able to dribble to the hoop, score a bucket, and get a foul. And John Glenn was really – they were playing – they played a zone most of the first three quarters. And meanwhile, they were able to break down – you know, Valley couldn't break down their – John Glenn's defense couldn't make it shift. Yeah, that um, three there by Riley Shepard was the, yeah. the only one he hit from outside the whole game. A lot of a uh, lot of foul trouble for the Vikings. They were struggling with fouls. Yeah, I know they had two and with three in the first half, and two with two in the first half. Mm-hmm. And that shot by Cooksey was a two pointer at the buzzer, made it twenty eight twenty. And then by the fourth quarter, John Glenn had really gone, gone away from the zone, gone to a man defense. And here just a tough rebound by Stephen Acasi, and he puts it back in. Valley really ratcheting up the pressure in the second half. Yeah. Um, making some things happen. Layup by Shrap Louie put John Glenn up by eight again. This is just, boy, Stephen has just improved so much since last year, and that was another example of a boat stronger, quicker, and then able to finish around the basket. It's a pull-up by Shepard that got him down to 4, 30, 26. And then this is just a, boy, what a nice finish by Cooksey. Makes a backdoor cut. Looks like John Glenn reacted to it pretty well, but Cooksey was able to finish. But just when it seemed like John Glenn was on the ropes, they, they got tough defensively. That was a bucket, I think it was by Blaine Sheets. that got it down to 34, 30. But they missed that three, and Valley didn't have any timeouts left, and they were down by five. And that was it, and John Glenn won 35-30. to 30. Yeah, yeah, so the uh, Falcons will be uh, advancing. They're going to be taking on uh, South Bend St. Joe. Yeah, at South Bend, Washington. At South Bend, Washington on uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, John so. Glenn came into the sectional with a record of 10-13. and 13 Yeah. And won three games in five days to win the sectional. Well well earned. I, uh, I wasn't able to talk to Valley coach uh, Joe Luce. Talk briefly with um, John Glenn coach Travis Hannon. He talked just about talked about his experienced kids. They start four seniors, and that they play a lot of normally don't only play basketball together. A lot of them play football together, and they just 
you know, they just tough it out. They're just a competitive group who they don't back down from challenges. And mm-hmm. again, he, I mean, they they did not play well at the end of the regular season. I think they went one and seven in their last eight regular season games. They were you wouldn't have expected them to win three games in five days, but they pulled it off. So um, yeah, kudos to them and, and how their defense got tough. And after after Valley got it to 30, 30 28 and when they Junglin looked like they were really on the ropes, they got even tougher defensively. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it looked like you know we were talking about it. Uh, it looked like maybe those two tough games to get there were starting to catch up to John Glenn, mm-hmm. but they were able to dig down and and find another gear at yeah. the end after Valley closed it to two. So mm-hmm. kudos to the Falcons. Uh, typically, Valley uh, ends their regular season ends their season at sixteen and nine. They'll be uh, obviously uh, joining the uh, Indiana Northern State Conference next year. So that'll be. Interesting to see how that right. all plays and out. And Knox and John Glenn will be two of their new conference rivals. Yeah. Um, Along with LaVille, you got Jimtown. Right. They beat LaVille and Jimtown both yeah. during the regular season. And uh, Bremen as well. We talked about them in that sectional. Bremen's pretty young. Yeah. And they got a lot coming back. Yeah, it's going to uh, be an interesting conference. And, you know, Riley Shepard and, and uh, Johnson both graduating. So, I mean, you're, you still got a lot of pieces coming back, but those are some two. Two big pieces, literally. Right. Well, Cooksey, Cowan, and Akasi coming back. Those are three starters who will be back. Now it's uh, how will the rest of the roster be developed mm-hmm. uh, moving forward. I, I'm really optimistic about Owen Omandi's chances of being a good player. Yeah. He had a yeah. nice year in the JV. You can tell he's a special athlete. Yeah. Um, I know there's somebody here at RTC that wants him to do well. Uh-huh. So. Wes Parker is Grandpa a guy. Roy. Okay. Yeah. Wes Parker is a kid who got a little bit of playing time in the sectional final. And, you know, Wes is just a competitor. Uh, just a terrific all-around athlete. I mean, he's going to have a chance to get some playing time as well yeah. next year. Yeah. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. And uh, what will Valley's schedule look right. like? That hard to guess. I, I imagine some of those teams will be kept on, but some might not be. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a couple notes here yeah. on the girls' side. I wanted to congratulate Ava E. Golf and Macy Peterson of the Valley girls basketball team. Both made uh, honorable mention academic all state this week. Good. Good. So again, Macy. And I play college basketball. I think she signed with uh, North Central. North Central up in mm-hmm. Minnesota this week. So, congrats. Don't know what, what Ava's college plans are. If she's going to play a sport, but yeah, well, just a great all-around person. Yeah. To to come to Valley. Yeah, and obviously getting it done in the classroom as well. So yeah. congratulations to yeah. both of those uh, players there mm-hmm. from Tippecanoe Valley. So, all right, that'll do it here for segment number one. We'll take a quick break here and come back and talk some more sports with Val here in just a moment. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com Call 574-857-3100 or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. 
Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, we had two other sectionals going on last week as well that we were covering, also down at Caston and Lewis Cass. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, sectional 52 there at Caston 1A sectional, where uh, the uh, Caston boys basketball team was uh, taking on. West Central in the uh, semifinal there on Friday. We'll go to those here. And needless to say, Caston was ready to go after a bye week. They had played in eight days. Uh, by the time they took the court against West Central on Friday and got off to a very quick start. Again, West Central had come off a 55-24 win over North White. And that was a team that West Central had actually lost to during the regular season. And beat North White pretty handily, but again, the first quarter of this game was all cast. And, and it was basically all Talon Zyder and all Caleb Stinson. Yeah, they're all at 9-1, to and again, the, the defense parts for Caleb Stinson to drive and score, and again, Caleb is just... I mean, you have got to keep him from getting into the lane off the dribble, and that was a 3 by. Zyder, and all of a sudden it's 18-1, to and they just kept adding on to the lead. Again, driving, kicking, and again, you, Zyder gets open again. You know, it was weird. Caston didn't play West Central during the regular season, which is... Right, excuse me, they did play during the regular season. They, the girls didn't play West Central, but... Yeah, that was a three-pointer that West Central banked into the buzzer. That was their only field goal of the quarter, and Caston went 22-4. to But it was just a surprise that West Central didn't seem to be ready to go defensively. And they allowed 24 points to North White the entire game. Cast at 22 in the first quarter. Now, having said that, West Central kind of uh, gained a little foothold in this game in the second mm -hmm. quarter. Went on a little run to start. Make things interesting. Again, West Central, you know, they get a veteran guard in Marlat. They got a very young guard in Grindstaff, who's just a freshman, who's going to be a good player for them. And, of course, they've got Nanenga, who's um, a thousand-point scorer already. And really, you know, he's 6'2", and really a really so solid kid mm -hmm. who can just basically do kind of anything on a, on a basketball court. He kind of reminds me a little bit of like a like a Tanner Reinert type player. Yeah. You can play outside and inside. Well, you, you know when you got a thousand points plus when you're a, a junior, you're, yeah. you're doing things right. And I think they got it down to 10. Kasson got the lead back to 12 at halftime at 32-20. Then the game kind of slowed down a little bit in the second half. Here's Nanenga hitting a three off the dribble. I got it down to nine. But Cass was able to get on the break and get a bucket there. And again, the lead stayed in pretty safe territory here. Nanenga, again, this is a, just a really nice basket. By him. He is just strong off the dribble. I think Castle would close this game out on like a 10 0 run or a 10 1 run. It was a 10 0 run, yeah. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of shooting three pointers with double-digit leads in the fourth quarter, but Talon Zyder is not your typical <laughs> three-point <laughs> shooter. And then again, they, they're able to break down the defense. They're able to drive to the basket and score. And I think that's Stinson with a steal and a layup in the final seconds. Castle would go on to win 58-37 to to improve to 11-12 and on the season and advance to the sectional final against Tri-County. Yeah, not a big surprise there. Tri County on the other side of that bracket, uh, able to get through. We kind of were um, looking at that when the when the schedule came out, when the bracket came out, that it was probably going to be uh, a cast in Tri County yeah. matchup. Tri County beat Frontier sixty six to thirty seven in the first game. They only beat Tri County by five, or they only beat Frontier by five during the regular season, but mm -hmm. really uh, blew them away in the in the in the sectional. So that set up the sectional final between uh, Tri County and Caston on Saturday night. These teams met earlier in the regular season at Tri-County. It was a uh, hard-fought game, but Tri-County got the win in the regular season matchup. 
Now, one again, you went to that first game. I, I, I've only seen the video highlights of this game. What what stood out to me is kind of, and it's interesting. We kind of said the same thing about the Tri County girls team when they played Caston in the sectional finals. That they're long defensively. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of length, and they it's hard to score in the paint on them. And they've, you know, Caston put fifty eight points on the board against them during their regular season meeting, but. Um, they are tough, and here again, they use their length to get in the passing lane and get a bucket and a foul. And they're, I don't know if you call them a big three, a Baylor, Zarcy, and uh, Foster mm-hmm. are all really nice players. Yeah, yeah. Zarcy's kind of the facilitator of the group. He kind of mm-hmm. uh, sets things up, but he can also score as well. And uh, Baylor, um, yeah, he can put them in in bunches. He's, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a good one. And again, I thought that the start of the second half was big. Caston led 19-15 at halftime. That was a three-point play um, to put, I think that was Stinson that made it 22-20 Caston. But then, again, Tri County able to finish. I think he had a little bit of a size advantage and stepping in the passing lane and getting another easy layup. And that put him up by three. And that three made it a six-point game. And then another big three put them up by seven in the fourth quarter, and it's just a seven-point deficit. Even get, even with cast and shooting, it's hard to overcome against a Tri-County team that plays defense like this. Again, they hit some threes, but they, they also scored in the paint some. They weren't overly relying on the three. Boy, Lane Hook's going to be a really good one. I'm not. Yeah. I don't think I'm breaking any news with that. But yeah. So as I say, there's there's some uh, bright spots for the uh, Comets coming up. I right. Mean, they're losing, obviously, a couple of really good players, in uh, you know Talon Zider and Caleb Stinson. You know, the other one that really uh, really came along for for casting this year, I thought, was uh, Grant Yaden. Mm-hmm. I mean. Obviously, it took him some time to get his football pads off, right? But uh, he really, yeah. um, you know, as we turned the corner for the uh, second half of the season there around Christmas, I mean, he really started to get his uh, basketball legs under him and, mm-hmm. and was doing some pretty good things there for the uh, Comets. But but Tri County was able to win forty-seven to forty, yeah. and was much much more of a defensive struggle than the regular season. Meaning, I guess yeah. that's to be expected in yeah. a sectional game, but. Yeah, uh, I think the better team won, Mm -hmm. Uh, and Tri-County was a team that, uh, I mean, uh, not to say that Caston was cold coming into the sectional, but I think Tri-County was a little hotter coming into the sectional, and um, again, they were a team that had to play two games, so you're wondering, would they, would fatigue affect them at all, and I I didn't didn't notice that at all. Yeah. You know, Caston's season, I guess if you summed it up a little bit, they they were a little up and down. They never really got a... A, a streak that was, you know, four or five games in a row winning, or but they never really had four or five games in a row losing either. They mm-hmm. just kind of, you know, they'd win one, lose one, win one, win two, lose one. You know, yeah. it just seemed like they just couldn't get that rhythm. Yeah. One thing I, one thing that um, that goes to show you how Coach Davis has built the program is that two years ago, when they graduated Smith. Cade Zider, Spin, uh, Rudisil, uh, Passion. It's like, boy, you graduate that group. That's going to be hard to come back from for a 1A team. Mm-hmm. But they've really, there, there really aren't any rebuilding years anymore for Caston. Now, this is going to be a hard group to replace. Again, they're mm-hmm. graduating Stinson, Zider, Yaden, um, Smith, mm-hmm. Klinger. Yeah, it's it's a big group. It's a big group mm-hmm. to graduate, but you know you, the the program is now so good at developing players where you're not going to feel too sorry for Caston. Mm-hmm. We with Hook, the two Summerses, um, they're graduating. Alex Craig as well. We should mention him because yeah. Alex was a guy who worked his way into the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. But with coming back, you know, hopefully we'll have Hook, Malenkoff, the two Summerses. Um, again, I, I think I think Caston. It, it's not a it's not a desperate situation, but they're going to have to d- develop some chemistry with with a new group next year. Two Summerses. 
Reed and Max Summerses. Summerses, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I tell you what, I, I don't know Max, but uh, Reed and, and Lane are really good friends. And mm-hmm. R- Reed actually earned some pretty good time towards the end of the year. Mm-hmm. He's not real yeah. big, but boy, is he fast. Mm-hmm. He is fast and he can handle the ball. And uh, he's going to get oversized by a lot of people, but. You know, you put him out top on the defense, he's going to cause some havoc. Yeah. He's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's worth noting that of the 16 sectionals in Class 1A, 12 of them were won by private schools. Mm-hmm. But Sectional 52 didn't have any private schools. All six teams in that section were public schools. So, yeah. uh, again, I, I don't know what that necessarily means, but, uh, again, schools like – it sounded like schools like DeMott Christian and – Elkhart Christian have been overwhelming powerhouses mm-hmm. in boys basketball, but this just seemed to be the year for the private school. For cat, so you, you just feel sorry for those kids. Did they let an opportunity slip away? Mm-hmm. Yep. And what will Caston's sectional look like next year? Yeah, yeah might be totally different, or it could be very similar. Yeah, we should be finding that out what in the next month or so. Uh, Monday, April 29th is the day we have kind of circled. Yeah, it's a little over a month. Mm-hmm. So, all right, uh, the other sectional we were covering last week was the 2A sectional down at uh, Lewis Cass High School, and uh, Pioneer and Wabash were still alive, or Pioneer and uh, Winnemac, Wabash too, but Pioneer and Winnemac, our schools, mm-hmm. were still alive uh, on Friday, but uh, unfortunately neither of those teams would make it to Saturday. Let's go ahead and uh, start off with game number one on Friday, the uh, – Pioneer Panthers taking on the Wabash Apaches for a chance to go to the championship game on Saturday. This was a game where neither team scored early. There was a three-pointer by uh, it was a Grant Ford to Wabash to put them up three to nothing, but it took over three and a half minutes before either team scored. Ryland Toloza scored on a drive in a bucket. But the key to this game was Wabash. They hit their first four shots of the game, and they led ten to two after one quarter. Pioneer had really kind of held on to the ball for most of the first quarter. Um, that was a deliberate thing. Then we talked with Coach Darren McKegg, and he said you know, that that was something they had in, in store once the draw came out, that they were going to um, basically hold the ball. Again, Pioneer, Lucas Perry hits a three. Again, Wabash able to break down the defense. and Again, this was kind of the three big turning point, that three by... Noah Miller gets it down to 16 to 10. But then Isaac Wright hit a big pull up jumper that made it 18 to 10. And they go on like a, a 7 0 run. It was, I think it was a 9 0 run actually. And it's 25 to 10 after the third quarter. Or 25 12. Yeah, 25 10 at one point. And then McKegg hits something at 25 12. But again, once you're down by 13 points, you can't play the game you want to play. Right. Uh, you're, now Wabash is playing the game they want to play. And then Daughtry, who had really been more of a facilitator the first three quarters, he gets his scoring shoes going. He had 13, but I think he had 11 of his 13 in the fourth quarter. Uh, three-pointer out of the corner. was it? And there, Miller hits a three. Miller had six on the night. Boy, Wabash is just a darn good basketball team. Five yeah. seniors. Uh, we saw what they did with Rochester. They're, um, they completely trust each other on the court, and they're they're just more than just a good shooting team. I know we've said that a million times. They're more than just a good shooting team, and they, Wabash wound up winning forty to twenty-two. Pioneer finished the season nine and fourteen. Yeah, it's big news this week for uh, Drew McKay. Though the uh, I, I would assume the valedictorian of the uh, class of twenty twenty four Pioneer. He's number one in his class. Yep. Yeah. But uh, he had got some big news as first well. First-team academic all-state in boys basketball. Only 38 players statewide were named first-team academic all-state. Because mm-hmm. um, it's by the IBCA, and they also include uh, athletic prowess mm-hmm. in their mm-hmm. in their uh, criteria. Mm-hmm. So it's not just good grades. Yeah. You have to be a, be a good basketball player, too. And yeah, yeah. Drew is obviously that. I mean, he had some just some monster games. He had 26 against North White, 27 against Culver. What a career Drew had! Scored his 1,000 point this season. Uh, I'm sure the nine and 14 record isn't what he wanted, but boy, Drew did everything he could, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed watching him play. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, a smart player, mm-hmm. coach's kid, but also a very smart kid, and uh, yeah, just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, but you know that he graduates. Uh, Ryland Toloza graduates. Braden Erickson graduates. Uh, Luke Blackman graduates. Um, it's gonna be, you know, it's a, it's it's a pretty big class, and you just they're just boy, you wish they had another year together because mm-hmm. they just got better and better as the season went on. Um, struggled to score at times. Yeah. Um, that's something that they'll. Um, I, that's why I think they the, the the strategy they went to. While it's not, uh, I, I I don't think I don't know anybody wants to play that way, but I think it was what they had to do. Yeah. And I mean, you don't want to you don't want to get too down on what's coming back, but uh, you know you're obviously losing a lot of your ball handling and your scoring, so it's it's going to be a bit of a rebuild for them next year. Right. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Micah Rands develops. Um, mm-hmm. He he really came out at the end of the season. He's a kid who's uh, strong and quick and can score. And then you know Miller is a is a really good shooter. And then Perry is a kid who uh, boy I like I, I just liked his toughness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tough kid uh, has a little bit of size there. You know, kind of, kind of reminds me a little bit of Luke Stoltz, a little bit shorter, obviously, but kind of plays that way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're they're not completely. You know, the cupboard's not empty, but they're they're going to have some big shoes to fill. Right. Shiloh Ryan is a freshman. Just really, the whole freshman class is mm-hmm. exciting. I mean, with Ryan, uh, Howard, Weldy, and uh, Shaver. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah, those kids did really well on the uh, football field for the Panthers yeah. and uh, followed up with some, some good stuff on the yeah. basketball court as well. Stick with it, guys. I, I think, uh, and hopefully, I think you'll be rewarding. Yeah, yeah, and there's, mm-hmm. I think there's some good classes coming up out of the junior high. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, next few years, they'll, uh, they'll be right back where they need to be. So, mm-hmm. all right, let's take another break here. We'll uh, come back. We'll finish off the uh, Lewis Cass sectional talking a little bit about the uh, Winnemac Warriors and kind of wrap things up here gonna be a little bit shorter of a show here as uh, we wrap things up for the 2023-2024 winter seasons and uh, get ready to start thinking spring so we'll be right back Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here Talking Sports with Val as we wrap up our show for today. And uh, back down at Lewis Cass High School, the second semifinal game of the evening on Friday, and it was the host Lewis Cass Kings taking on the Winnemac Warriors, the winner to advance to the championship versus Wabash on Saturday evening. We kind of thought this one would be a pretty close game, and it was, and it was, well, I think looking back, it was probably the best game of the sectional. 
yeah. of the five games of the sectional. This one was competitive wise. It, it definitely was. Uh, obviously, we'll see at the end. But yeah, it was a it was a dandy. And the Winnipeg Warriors kind of uh, kind of controlled this thing for the most part uh, throughout the uh, specifically J- uh, Brendan Hines and Jace Bentel controlled this game. Mm-hmm. They were awesome. Yeah, at the start, and the Winnipeg jumped out to a twelve to four lead, and they basically controlled most of the first half. Um, L.J. Hillis was well. He's a matchup problem for most teams because he's six yeah. four and he's strong, but he's also, I mean, he can. And here's the shot by Justin Potoff at the end of the first quarter, a half court. Three. That put Winnipeg up by eight. They will lead by as many as nine. Bentel. That was as well as I've seen Jace Bentel shoot the ball all year. Hillis just kind of put the yeah. uh, Kings on his back there in this one. And yeah. Hines hit that three. Winnipeg led by eight at halftime, 28 20. Hines gets the roll. They're up 32 24. Um, Rudd was the star player for Lewis Cass in the third quarter. I believe he had 10. Yeah, there's back-to-back threes. And here's a steal by Trey Johnson. Looked like he almost lost the ball, but he was able to get under control, get under two feet and score. That got the lead down to one. Hillis was awesome in the fourth quarter. And he can score off the drive, he can shoot the three, um, he can score with his back to the basket. Yeah. Um, not a lot of guys who can do all of those things. He gets he gets kind of in awkward positions, but he does a really good yeah. job of scoring his shoulders to the basket mm-hmm. and, and finishing off two feet. Huge three by Brendan Hines. Ties the game at 46 with about two minutes to go. And the rest of the points in this game would come on free throws. Here, Malco... Would get fouled. The ball just spins out. That was almost a three-point play. He does hit the two free throws. That cuts the lead to 49-48. Winnemac would make it 50-48. to And then that was a brilliant play. They screen off Trey Johnson. I mean, that was first-rate coaching by Coach Springer to get Brendan Hines a look there. Mm-hmm. Because he had, he had pot off set a screen. He had Burgess just be a facilitator. So I think what Lewis Cass wanted to do is they wanted Trey Johnson to just put some token pressure on Hines, make him work to get the ball up past half court. But the, the screen by Potoff mm-hmm. allowed Hines to get a head of steam up up the court. Yeah. And he got – that's about as good of a look as you can expect from the mm-hmm. best shooter on the team. Yeah. He got the look they wanted, and, and it was it was there. He just kind of a little bit hard off the back iron. Mm-hmm. And it would have been the you know the biggest shot in Winnemac, uh, you know, in a while. If in he a while, hit yeah. It. Right, I mean, you know, they had that upset win over Lewis Cass back in the 2020 sectional. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it would have been a big win. I mean, that that that, that wasn't a buzzer beater. This one would would have been a buzzer beater. Uh, but yeah, a heartbreaker for Winnemac as they finished the season 12 and 13 mm-hmm. after a 50 to 48 loss. You know, Winnemac kind of another one of those teams we talked about cast and having some some ups and some downs. Uh, Winnemac kind of same way. You know, they started off right. with those two big wins and. And then they had a, a streak there where they where they lost four or five or uh, maybe more there in a row. And right. They you know they had a win, nice win over North Newton earlier in the season. They had played North Newton again in the Indiana Kitchen Classic and lost. Mm-hmm. And again, they were up. I, I think they they, they were outscored thirteen to two in the fourth quarter in that game. In mm-hmm. the game where they were winning, they're winning the whole way. They beat Delphi the first time they played them. Lost to Delphi the second time they played them. Um, had some nice wins in conference. Um, had a really nice win over Caston the last week of the regular season. Then they lose to Demont Christian, though that loss looks a little bit better now because Demont Christian won their one a won a very tough one a sectional. But yeah. yeah, some ups and downs for the team. I talked with Coach um, Mike Springer afterwards. Very complimentary of the seniors. Said his seniors had to sacrifice some to allow some of the younger guys to get their opportunities, like mm-hmm. Will Malco and Brendan Hines. Um, that they had to make some sacrifices. Uh, yeah. Justin Potoff. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to you look at those three yeah. coming yeah. back. I yeah. mean, boy, they got they got a bright future, right? And he he complimented. He went out his way to compliment Aiden Jimenez after the game. He said, mm-hmm. he said I sat down Aiden. I told him, I said you're not starting anymore. We're starting pot off. Right. And he goes, he didn't take it very well. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I get it. He goes, I wouldn't have taken it very well either. Mm-hmm. But he he got mad for about a day. 
day or two, and then he was back in practice, and it was just he continued to just continue to play hard and contribute yeah. to the team. Well, he put in some really good minutes in that game yeah. against uh, Lewis Cass. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, yeah, he I was. Mean, hats off. It, it's tough, obviously, when you got somebody that's that's older and and you you decide to to go with somebody younger. It's it's tough. Yeah, right, a senior to make make way yeah. for a sophomore. Yeah, and he was a kid who I uh, you know I don't know if he was I don't know if. They were 100% sure he was going to even come out for basketball at the start of the year, and he mm-hmm. did. And uh, no doubt, I mean, you saw the way I saw the way the coaches and the administrators were 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 talking to him, and they, just ultimate respect for Aiden Jimenez. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, this isn't just us talking; it was the everybody there. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be missed, obviously. Uh, you know, Jace Bennell, um, you know, he had a, a wonderful game, and and just uh, yeah, another kid know. who made some sacrifices too. Yeah. So, uh, but a, a good core coming back, right? With Will Malico and Potoff, who's just—I'm really curious to see how good he he gets. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he spends some time in the gym this off season, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of player he turns out to be because uh, he's a kid who doesn't need a shot falling to be able to score. Mm-hmm. And with Will Malco, uh, Potoff, and Brendan Hines, and then Jabin Hines is going to be a good player too. Yeah. Oh yeah, the freshman Hines. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we've seen Potoff's range. Yeah, <laughs> he can shoot. Uh, he can shoot from way outside. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see what the Warriors can do next year. Had some notes here for a couple of uh, Winnemac Lady Warriors. Congratulations to Lily Bennett and Maggie Smith. They were named honorable mention academic all state yeah. by the IBCA. So congratulations yeah. to them. Congratulations to uh, mm-hmm. to both of those girls. And you know I'm sure my there'll be a, a lot of people that uh, are glad to see those two graduate. The, mm-hmm. They've caused some uh, chaos in the conference in a good way for Winnemac, obviously, but, uh, you know, two very good players. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Maggie finish out her uh, career as a runner, too. Yeah. She's Slash a softball player. <laughs> yeah. Is she doing both again? I think so, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. What is it? Two, four, five sports that she does? Five, yeah. Yeah, five-sport athlete. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. So we just wanted to mention final records against teams that won their sectional. Rochester went 0-4 against teams that won their sectional. They lost to North Judson, lost to Wabash twice, lost to Peru. Uh, Peru wound up winning their 3A sectional. Valley went 1-4. and four. They lost to Mishawaka. Uh, they split the two with John Glenn. They're obviously, that's kind of the irony of it. Their one win against the team that won their sectional was the team that won their, their sectional. sectional. yeah. John Glenn lost to Kokomo, uh, lost to uh, Peru, lost to Kokomo, lost to Warsaw. Caston went one and two. The two losses were both to Tri County. The one win was against North Judson. Yeah. Uh, Pioneer went two and two. Uh, they they had the most wins of any team in area against sectional champions, beating Demont Christian and North Judson, both by one point. Lost to Tri County, and of course lost that sectional game to Wabash. Winnemac went one and one. They had that double overtime win over North Judson, lost to Demont Christian in the regular season finale. Uh, Argus went 0 3, losing to John Glenn, lost to North Judson, lost to Elkhart Christian in the regular season finale. And Culver went 1 1. They had a win over DeMott Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That turned out to be maybe their most impressive win of the year. Mm-hmm. And then lost a tough one to North Judson toward the end of the regular season. So, yep. wanted to give a shout out to uh, more academic honors in swimming. Uh, congratulations to Kylie Attinger and Chloe Chan of Pioneer, Caitlin Stump and Caitlin Stump and McKenna Rentschler of Tippecanoe Valley. Both first team academic all state in swimming. And congratulations to Addie Kripe and Kaya Murray of Pioneer, honorable mention academic all state in swimming. Good. Congratulations. It's, uh, swimming is, is a, just a sport that I've never understood. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously I understand swimming, but those, those kids put themselves through a, uh, a lot yeah. for about four months. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. So. so those are the girls' honors. We, this is from the IG, ICGSA website. If there are boys swimmers who've been honored, I just haven't heard about it yet, but we'll get to it at some at some point in a future show. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, that'll wrap us up here for our winter sports. We'll uh, take a few weeks off. I know, uh, Val, you've got a vacation scheduled uh, coming up. I've got a vacation scheduled coming up here for uh, spring break, and uh, so we will uh, we will be back in a few weeks, probably about a month, I, I guess, and. We'll uh, we'll get our all RTC winter teams, uh, so we'll do a show for that, and then obviously we'll get going and uh, preview our spring sports. We'll talk obviously about baseball and softball and track and uh, all the sports. You know, we've got uh, boys golf and girls tennis as well. I think we're gonna have a really fun golf season. Yeah, 
we've got a lot of good golfers in our area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and obviously softball and baseball. I mean, this. Yeah, I'm interested to see uh, you know some of these teams. Obviously, Rochester's got a really good freshman class coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got some holes to fill, obviously, with the the girls that graduated. So I'm I'm curious to see how that goes. Rochester baseball, you know, they they graduated a bunch, but boy, they should be just loaded. Yeah, still. Yeah, nobody's going to fe- be feeling too sorry for them. Mm-hmm. And this Caston gonna- baseball should be Caston softball should be, you know, right up there as well. Again. Right, right. Caston baseball, I'm really excited. Um, t- you know, because when you have, um, you know, first of all, Caleb Simpson, one of the best defensive center fielders in our area. You got an ace pitcher in Talon Zider. Uh, this team's got a lot of good pieces. Yeah, uh, to it. Yeah. Um, Don't forget about Pete. And Pete Duvall, yeah. I mean, with yeah. Talon and Pete, you've got maybe yeah. the be- one of the best one-two combos. Obviously, Rochester will probably have something to say about that yeah. with Reinerts and whoever their number two is. Obviously, they're going to miss Aaron Huffman, but yeah. uh, got a lot of – there's a stable of pitchers that yeah. Coach Corey Good can rely on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Valley, I think, you know, um, uh, with uh, – obviously, you know, they have to find out who their catcher is because that's going to be big. Uh, but you know, again, Coach, uh, uh, Coach there is Coach Jared. He's he's really knowledgeable about the game, and the kids love playing for him. Um, yeah, you know, Winnemac. I'm I'm excited just to uh, to see the new softball field. Yeah, yeah, it looked great from the yeah. pictures that I saw. Yeah. yeah, always have. You know, Coach Belcher always does a great job down there. So mm-hmm. they they are always in ready to go. Uh, you know, Pioneer. Um, Softball, baseball should be pretty good as well. I'm curious to see. You know, we, we saw Lois Lair obviously mm-hmm. star on the basketball team as a freshman. Uh, mm-hmm. She's even better on the softball diamond. I'm, I'm excited to see what she can do as a freshman. And a really good catcher to throw to in Casey Webb. Mm-hmm. Kylie Attinger, Emma Sells, good senior class as well. Yeah. To yeah. mix in with the young players. The baseball team down there has been uh, been doing pretty well the last few years as right. well. Brayden Erickson, one of the best pitchers in yeah. the Hoosier North. Yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously they're going to – yeah, so that, that's going to be a good team as well. The the number two set will be the question there, I mm-hmm. guess, with Pioneer, who's going to be the number two pitcher. Especially in conference where you have those double headers. Yeah, yeah, the Hoosier or North the, or, does or the, two Or two game sets, yeah. yeah, yeah. You need a second pitcher. Yeah. So really looking forward to it. Looking forward to the uh, the weather that comes along with uh, baseball and softball and track season. And um, I have some short sleeve shirts that have just been aching to get out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, we're ready to go. Looking forward to it. So um, I guess that's it for us. Anything else you want to say? Um, I'm sure I'll forget something as soon as we turn off. But yeah, I think that's we've had a gr- we had a great winter, boy. Um, there's nothing like sectionals week. Yeah, it's just it's hard to believe. I mean, it seems like just yesterday we were like, okay, girls basketball is coming up here in the next week or so, and mm-hmm. practices started, and now we're like, okay, winter sports is done. Yeah, and it'll be the same thing, you know. And it'll seem like we we blink our eyes, and spring sports is done. Yeah, it's, just, it's crazy. Yeah, kudos to Fishers. The Fishers boys won their first sectional title in mm-hmm. school history under Coach Garrett Weininger, Rochester grad. Yeah, yeah, had a very very big game against Kokomo. At yeah, Newcastle. At, at Newcastle, and and I saw they're actually favored. Fishers is favored. Fishers beat Kokomo during the regular season. Beat them, I think, by twenty. Yeah, yeah. So, could uh, could they end the career of the the great Flory Badunga? Yeah. So, uh, it'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. Of course, you couldn't have a, a game like that at anywhere else than Newcastle, could you? Either the, either Banker's Life or uh, it had, it had to, or, When I saw that Newcastle was a site, it had to be Newcastle. Yeah. I thought the interesting thing was, and I texted you about this, mm-hmm. Fort Wayne North, Fort Wayne Wayne, playing a regional game. They are 12 minutes away from each other, and they're going to play a regional game at Logan Sport. Right. Because there's nowhere closer to put them. Now, a few years ago, Homestead played Carroll of Fort Wayne at the Berry Bowl. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah, they're just, they have, there's no regional site in the Fort Wayne area. So I'm surprised they don't have a Huntington North mm-hmm. for a boys regional. Yeah. I mean, they were in there for the girls regional. It's just... Uh, just seems odd that you you have to take two teams that are twelve minutes away and and go that far for a, a regional game, but <laughs> I'm sure they'll uh, they'll make a day of it and enjoy it. Yeah. So, all right, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back in a few weeks. We'll uh, wrap up our uh, winter sports with our all RTC teams, and then we'll uh, be back in a week or so after that, probably, and start our spring stuff. Start doing some uh, 
previews on things to come here for our spring sports. So hope everybody has a uh, great spring break and be safe and, and put on your sunscreen, right? Yep. Enjoy the enjoy the sun if you get to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. If not, just enjoy the uh, changing weather here in Indiana because guarantee it will change <laughs> every day. See you, everybody.